And since my mother is dead, my late brother, because he trusted me, had put in his will that I hold my mother's shares in trust. So that is another 20 million shillings in my account. Again, my late brother left me another 4% to hold in trust of the children of another brother of ours who is deceased, the late Dr. Friend Washira Gashagwa, whose children are in South Africa. And another 16 million shillings was put in my account. My late brother gave 2% to my wife, Pastor Dalkas, because of her kindness of looking after him when he was ill. All this money that has come to me from a dead brother, I'm being told are proceeds of crime. Um, Queen's, Gate, Queen's Gate Service Apartments, another property belonging to the late Kashagwa, is another property that I'm told I have bought as when I'm deputy president. That is why I have 5.2 billion worth of money. And this property, again, we sold the Cooperative Bank of Kenya, the staff retirement benefits for nearly 600 million. And this money we utilized to pay his debts. And today, as the late Kashagwa rests in heaven, he has no debt. Again, I want to thank my fellow executors, Jiroge Regeru and Mwaima Tenge, for what you have done for my brother. Vipingo Beach Resort in Kilifi was Gashagwa's holiday home, a beautiful palatial resort on three and a half acres on the beach. I remember with nostalgia that he used to host us there every Christmas to enjoy ourselves. This property still belongs to the estate of the deceased because ourselves have a family. We want to retain it for sentimental value so that when we visit there, we remember him and his kindness. The Honorable Mutuse again goes to the National Assembly in a very emotional manner quoting the Bible says that this property has been bought corruptly by the Deputy President without knowing where the money has come from. I have seen some land, Rogoro Kiamariga 1223 in Matera East constituency. To start with, Rogoro Kiamariga is not in Matera East constituency. It is in Madeira West constituency. In haste to dispose of the deputy president because of political deceit and conmanship and betrayal, they could not even get it right where the land is treated. They were in such a haste to get rid of the deputy president. The land is Ruboru stroke Kiamariga. 1223 in Madeira West constituency. It's a two acre piece of land. It's alleged it has a helipad. It's a lie. The land is two kilometers from my rural home. And I planted Napier grass for my daily unit. I bought it at 3.5 million shillings. Again, proceeds from my dairy farm. I have a dairy farm with almost 150 cows. And I do make an income of almost 1.5 million shillings every month. I can surely afford to buy two acres of land. And I take this opportunity to thank my brothers from the college in community for that dairy farm. Any time I've gone to the Rift Valley, in appreciation of the support I give President William Ruto, the college in community always gives me a cow or two. And within two years, 
I have the largest dairy farm in Madera constituency, Katase, of the Kalajin people. I want to thank them for their kindness. I have seen an accusation that I've bought 40 acres of land in Kakuret, Kabraine, in Keni, Nyeri constituency as Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. I saw the Honorable Jiroga Wainaina, the MP for Kenya, signed the notice of motion to impeach me on the allegations, this one being among them. Had there been no malice, Jiroga Wainaina, the Honorable MP for Kenya, would have advised the Honorable Mutuse that he sold me this land in the year 2015. I have a sale agreement I'll give you with this picture. I bought this land from the Honorable Choroge Wainaina in 2015. I was not even a member of parliament. Yet he has appended his signature that I should be impeached and go home for having corruptly bought 40 acres of land in Kakuret. In fact, the land is not 40 acres, it's actually 35. The allegation is that it's 40 acres. But that land is 35 acres. The people of Kakuret know it. I bought it from the Honorable MP for Kenny. And had he read this motion, I'm sure he would not have signed it. But as you all know, there was a lot of coercion. There was a lot of intimidation. And I'm sorry that I'm told the Honorable Inaina is admitted in hospital because of threats, coercion. He is being forced to hang a brother against his will and his conscience. These are the lies that Mutuse brought to the National Assembly and asking the people of Kenya to get rid of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya based on lies. I have seen another ridiculous allegation that the Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, has since becoming Deputy President, acquired eight acres of land in Meru. That is false. What is true is that the Deputy President is a, manger, is a member of Solution Circle Limited in Meru. And for those who do not know, the deputy president is half Meru, half Kikuyu. His mother, the late mother Kirigo Kashagwa, was born in Meru in a place called Katheri, and thereafter settled in Kiberesha. Deputy President Rigadi Kashagwa sometimes is a lonely man. His father is dead, his mother is dead. His brother, Derito Kashagwa, the governor, died of pancreatic cancer. His brother, Dr. Fred Washira Kashagwa, died because of alcohol. His other brother, Jackson Rian, died because of alcohol. His sisters are married. So when he goes home, many times he's lonely. And he decided to look for some land in Meru where he can go and build a house and be among his relatives, his mother's relatives. And in the process, I identified a 29-acre land and borrowed money from Solution Circle, which I'm paying every month. We'll give you documents to show you that this is 29 acres, not 8 acres, that I have bought from a loan that I have taken as a member of Solution Circle in Meru the land of my mother, and which I call home. I have seen an allegation that I have a dairy farm in Yandaro. I don't have a single animal in Yandaro. I have some little land in a place called Shamata, but I'm yet to do anything about it. I think I just mentioned it to one of the, the member of parliament for that area called Gashagua, that I would like to start a dairy farm. And I think in those rumors in parliament, <laughs> The Honorable Mutuse, 
went ahead to say that I own a dairy farm in Nyandaro. I own no such farm today, but God willing, because of the good climate in Daragua in Shamata, one day, God willing, I'll have a huge dairy farm. I have seen companies listed just to create an impression that the Gadi Gashagwa is doing No. 13 years ago, 10 years ago, that Regadi Gashagwa was a businessman before he became a politician. And he had a life. And that life is part of his history. So getting companies that were associated with him 15 years ago, 13 years ago, 10 years ago, and publishing them, is just being mischievous. My life did not start as deputy president. I left university in 1989 and served the public for 15 years up to the year 2002. I left for the private sector for another 15 years. In those 15 years, I was a very astute businessman. And luckily for me, Maybe of you who are not that lucky. It was during the Kibaki era when things were working. The economy was strong, business environment was right, and there was room to make money. And I made money that time. Those are old companies, and they are not trading. And when I became deputy president, a few companies that own properties, I transferred to my children. And I told them to continue doing business and not to do business with the government because I don't want conflict of interest. I want to confirm to the people of Kenya tonight that none, no company owned by my children has ever done business with the government. And I'm demanding for proof from the Honorable Mutuse or anybody else linking the Gashagwa, the Regadi Gashagwa family with business deals with the Kenya government. I agreed with my children that they do business with the private sector, do farming, and run the family business that I bequeath them. These companies are all listed. And just for the for clarity, because I don't think they are worth a reply. Because there is nothing about them. Regardi Geshagwa Foundation. As a member of parliament, I was educating orphans. I was educating children of single mothers. I was educating children of PWDs. And the education needed to continue. And I don't have the benefit of CDF money. So I started a foundation, the Regardi Geshagwa Foundation, to continue doing the work of charity. I have seen my foundation here. The Honorable Mutuse has not said what crime the Deputy President has done by having a foundation that is non-profit making. For the purposes of clarity, I'll give you the bank statement for this foundation. I have only received a total of 12 million shillings from well-wishers, which have educated children, have educated students at Pwani University, and other venerable people. Dokas Regadi Gashagwa Foundation. This is just an attempt to bring my family into mud. Every Kenyan know the work Dokas Regadi has done in this country for the boy child. She has opened clinics for addicted children and she gets a lot of money in her foundation. Since a decision was made that the government will not fund the office or the spouse of the deputy president, Kenyans of goodwill flock to her every day with cash donations, with material donations, for her to continue with a very good program she's doing of rehabilitating children in Kilifi, in Mombasa, in Nyandarwa, in Laikipia, 
in Nairobi and her work is well documented. I am here to see from the mover of this motion what crime the Dokas Gadi Shagwa Foundation has done. There is no allegation, there is no evidence, there is nothing. Again, it's regarding the Shagwa Foundation, there is nothing. Spiritway Limited is a company registered by Dokas Rigadi that does work with the church ministries. This ministry has not traded, does not even have a bank account. It's some strong women of God who have come together to create a company around their issues to preach the gospel. The mover of this motion has not indicated at all what crime this company has committed other than dragging the name of my wife into mud in the National Assembly. Calvary Creed International Limited, as the name suggests, is a company founded by my wife in 2015, long before I became a deputy president. Again, on evangelism and activities to do with the Church of Christ. I have not seen a single allegation against this company. Mothers of the Lord Limited. Again, this is a company incorporated my wife, Pastor Docas, in 2021 with our friends. It has never traded. It does not even have a bank account. The Anani Collective. This is a business name registered by my son, Dr. Keith Rigadi, in 2021 before I came into office. And I have asked him, and he has told me the ideas he had, they have not yet come to fruition. So the company is dormant. I am where to see a single allegation against this company by this young man. Grad Pass Apartments Limited is a company that the executors of the late Gashagua put together to manage Langata View Apartments. The late Gashagua left 80 apartments for his children in Langata and asked us to sell and distribute the proceeds to the wives, the children, and the brothers in a formula that he gave. In a family meeting that I chaired, we agreed as a family that we should not sell the flats. We should share them so that everybody can be getting a rental income. In that formula, because of the shares he gave to me, I have 10 flats. His daughter has 10, his wife has five, another one has two, another has was one. So we did put this company together called Grand Bypass Apartments Limited. This is a company that will be managing those flats on behalf of the beneficiaries of the estate of the late Gashago. Again, this company has been put here by the Honorable Mutuse as a company that is involved in corruption. A company set to manage flats belonging to a dead good man who had foresight to think about the future of his children. And in his death, he is being haunted on nonsensical allegations simply because a decision has been made that regarding Ashagwa is no longer useful to this administration. He is a spent cartridge. His work was to help fight Uhuru Kenyatta and get President William Ruto to power. And thereafter, he is of no use, so he should be dispensed with and somebody else can be appointed. Again, it's the will of the Kenyan people. That is the viciousness that we are even fighting the dead. How cruel can we be? How insensitive can we be? What is this power thing that you even fight the dead for you to entrench yourself in power and get rid of you are perceived political enemies. I appeal.
appeal to the people of Kenya to have respect for the dead, if nothing else. People may have money, they may have power, they may have everything, but they must remember that it is very respectful to respect the dead. Please stop haunting my little brother. Don't put him on trial. He committed no crime by working hard and leaving an inheritance for his children and entrusting his brother, Ricardo Gashagua, to look after that property. <laughs>